Dat is misschien een van de eerste punten in ons leven. Die boegenplant. Die boegenplant is vandaag zoals die kleipot. Die kleipot kan, je nie, kan amper niet meer gebak worden. Van die kennis het een beetje weggeraakt. Die, uh, dat is dus een technische kennis wat daar een gebouw wordt om een kleipot te bak. Weet je dat Dat is amper weggeraakt. Zo so is die boegen, die geheim van die boegen en die waarde van die boegen ook een beetje weggeraakt. Die boegen kan ik noem ons als een heilige plant. Die boegen is zoals die eland. Hij heel. Hij werkt geestelijk. De two, two types of boegen uh, used commercially uh, these days. This is the, the uh, betulina one. You can see we call it a round leaf. There's a little uh, round leaf. Uh, compared to this one, it's an oval leaf. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can see the one is the one is round and the one is more more oval. And also a big difference is is in in the type of, of plant. Look at look at this yes. thick stems. Yeah. At, at to to compare to this uh, yeah. betulina one, it's a thin. Uh, elongated, uh, uh, this is a much yeah. more tree-like plant, yes. right, and so if, an, and now it's going to do the, the different smells, mm. if I break the, the oil, you can yeah. smell it, it smells, it smells like that, and if you break this one, it's much more fragrant, so it's wow. a, it's a whole, yes. whole different uh, smell. <laughs> Dus alle boze gaken, waar moet ik gaan om die, die planten en medicijnen te groeien om mensen te komen helpen, dat ze gaan eerst kan worden, dat ze verder gezond kan worden. Het is hoe ons, ons zand, hoe ze kunnen gebruiken voor die medicijnen. Dit is een baie speciale plant voor die boesmans, want Voor ons is het baie spiritueel. Uh, ons het het gebruik in die oude wanneer die mans transdans doen, healing dans doen, dan word hulle teruggebring weer uh, met Boegu. So Boegu het een baie belangrike rol gespeel in die oude en nog steeds vandag. Vandag gebruik ons Boegu as metesijne vir ons self en vir ons kinders en vir ander mense. So dit, dit, is, dit, is, dit is uitstekende uh, met de zinnen voor ons allemaal. En ons als zon mensen is baie lief voor boeken. Als ik moet zeggen, zal ik zeggen dat ze oh, ding wat samen die pad komt. Die zon het nog nooit iets voor hemzelf geëien. Hij heeft altijd mededeelzaam geweest. Daarom heeft hij nooit iets gekoopt bij iemand die, of iets aan iemand verkoopt. Hij dit gereil. En, 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 ik geef je dit en jij geeft mij dit. Uh, so dit is die uitreil van kennis, was altijd ons doel en vandag nog glo ons dat ons kennis baie belangrik is vir die westerse wereld, omdat dit altijd iets is wat saam, ver saamgekom het en gehelp het vir siektes, het het gehelp vir mense, so, daarom is by ons is, is, is alle plante baie belangrik, want dit is ons kos, ons water en ons metesijne. My involvement in the book is that basically um I'm the MD, the Managing Director for Cape Kingdom Nutraceuticals. Um, we like to think that we pioneered a um, um, whole medicinal range now of Buchu products uh, using proper scientific research from our leading institutions in South Africa. And I decided this was a new calling for me after my mother told me that the, the properties of the Buchu was doing great for her bad arthritis in her hands. And that was a challenge for me, and I started then to sort of get very interested in buchu. And uh, we started at the early stages selling buchu water, as it were, in five-liter containers. Uh, first, we gave it away to people on the farm, as because uh, we wanted to try and get the farm labor people to get off alcohol and sort of start 
living the living the healthy life, as it were. And this was the start with the Buchu, as I say, this started 18 years ago. Ek is a liefhebber van plant. Om het ek groot geword het met planten, het ek ook groter geword het, het nie baie langskole gegaan het, om het my focus aan die natuur oor planten was. Dat het meer gegaan oor gezondheid en oordra van kennis. Well, it's well known that traditional knowledge can lead to valuable products such as medicines and food ingredients and even cosmetics. And that's been proven through history over time, through various products that have been on the market based on indigenous knowledge. In this particular case, we know that the Sun people have a rich heritage of that knowledge and has been carried over to generations and generations. My particular research focuses on how can you harness that knowledge owned by the Sun people and how can what research can be undertaken to, to develop products that could actually cure some of the various diseases in the world and actually lead to a, a better, to, to ma a healthier mankind. Ons het wetenskapelikes nodig om, om die ouwe ding modern te maak. Want anders, er, ons, ons, ons werk op die ouwe ou stelsel. Ons kook nog steeds die medicijne en hulle sê nee, ons kan dit in die pil sit. Nee, ons kan dit in die brooikie sit. So hulle het een beter plan a, a, om die ding te verwerk vir almal. My uh, research at the CSAI involves interacting with the indigenous knowledge holders the traditional health practitioners as well as the San and the Khoisan communities in adding value to our South African biodiversity by integrating both the indigenous knowledge and the scientific knowledge to develop new innovative technologies that can be commercialized through industry partners. So we work with the various role players across the whole value chain that includes the knowledge holders, the communities, um, various universities, science councils, and industry. The South African Sun Council was established in 2001 to protect the rights of the Sun people in South Africa. So basically what the South African Sun Council do is they do advocacy and lobbying on behalf of the Sun communities in South Africa. The South African Sand Council is under SASI's legal um, part of, of SASI. So where we do uh, intellectual property rights, uh, fight on behalf of the Sun people's rights. The South African Sand Institute is an NGO registered in South Africa for being in existence for the last 18 years. Um, actually working very strongly on culture and heritage, but also um, the preservation of, of culture, and everything that's attached to that, um, which includes intelle intellectual knowledge of the sand people. Ja, ik voel zo. So, ik denk en ik weet ook dat die verschillende gebruiken van Bogo is van pa naar zin, van opa naar pa, van opa groeitje naar opa toe oorgedra. En ik voel dat. Uh, onze oudste gem gemerkte graf, en dat is net die gemerkte graf, is een graf van 1893, wat, wat vir my sê dat die persoon moet, moest in die 1600s gelewe het. So, dit wil vir my sê dat ons voor die Europeers hier gekom het, was ons hier op Algeria geweest of in die Sierenberge geweest en ek voel van pa na sien is die kennis oorgedra en ek voel ons het een recht op, op die boegel om ons het, dat ons eie eind doen te maken. Die gebruik van die boegel was wonderlijk in die oude dag geweest. Het was gebruik voor uh, pijn in die rug, maag. Hij was met aan en aan kruis gemengd. En uh, dat was wonderlijk. Die gebruik was wonderlijk. Die mensen het, het afgetrek met die vier, op die vier gezet en uh, daar water opgegooid en afgetrek. En dit het die gedrunk en dit het wonderlijke resultaten geleverd. Zo, mm. so, die boegel was in een van die baie kruies in die Sierabergen wat mense uh, geken het en wat mense gebruik het om, om uh, daar was self uh, boeg om een mense maag of wind as hy of sy miskien uh, koers of so het en dat het om afgebring en so. So boeg was wonderlijk gebruik en boeg kom van al die jare af kom boeg aan en is boeg een wonderlijke kruie in die Sierabergen. 
this uh, this plant here used to look like this one and uh, here you can see we are uh, the way we are harvested with the sickle uh, we harvest two-thirds of the plant we harvest for, for um, the oil, uh, this, this taking the oil for all from the plant. Now, what what's happened here is this plant's uh, uh, properties is, was much better than this plant. So all the plants we don't want to flower and, and make seeds were harvested in, in between. And, and left behind is the, is the plants we want to take forward with, with our, uh, uh, to, the, to the next uh, seed. seed seed level this here you can see the little little seeds seed pots and about december january in the in the mid of the of the summer that spot is uh, burst open and it shoots its, its seeds like of many meters like up to six meters away from the plant to be scattered around uh, the mother plant just before the, the seeds is released a net around the plant and that catch all the all the seeds and then we take the seeds away and we make new seedlings from that. These products we've been able to identify strong antibacterial properties, strong anti-inflammatory properties as well as antifungal properties. We developed a topical gel which is kind of one of the first dual purpose products in the world that you can use for cuts, bruises, burns, bites, um, for, for, for muscular damage. Uh, recently we did some research which was very exciting which put us on a whole different track as well where we've looked at in, in terms of a, a recent rat model where we've looked at um, different types of uh, diabetes and various other things which was very exciting to see the results and we're still working on that at the moment. So we've been working uh, with various plants based on the science indigenous knowledge. The three commonly known plants is the hudia, buhu, and the rooibos. We're looking at integrating the two knowledge systems and working with the San and the Khoisan as co-investigators um, on projects where we develop products for the various industries. That's the pharmaceutical market, the complementary medicine market, cosmetics, as well as the food industry. We've cooperated fully with the, with the SAN and in fact um, I'm very proud to say that we're one of the first people to in fact have a proper full-on benefit sharing agreement both with the SAN and with the Khoi communities of, of South Africa um, and as I say um, we've also recently been granted our full-on government, government approval for this and we are by prospecting permit and everything to do with the biodiversity we're, we're fully up there involved in this and it's been a, a, um, a really good thing. So Buhu is it's found in a very specific region, as, you, as you'll see, um, in the Western Cape, in the mountains of the Southwestern Cape, in the Fainbos biome, which is a very, very special biome in South Africa. And it's not very widely distributed. You, you know, you'll come across areas of it where there are large populations, but it's very easy to over-harvest um, the plant. And as a result of that, there have been a lot of initiatives now to look at uh, cultivating it to prevent uh, sort of uh, environmental degradation and over-exploitation of the species. Whenever there's an exchange of information, of traditional knowledge, there's an expectation that there will be a successful product at the end. And that is certainly not always the case. Innovation is not always successful. The important question is who owns the traditional knowledge there could be competition between different communities leading to conflict as to who owns the knowledge and therefore who gets a share of the uh, proceeds. For instance, in the case of the Buhu, the original knowledge holders were clearly the San people who were here from 40,000 years back. But there are many other communities falling under the Khoi rubric, which includes Namas and Krikwas and Koranas, all of whom have utilized the Buhu in the last 2,000 years. So one might very well ask, how should that be shared between those different communities? The biggest challenge, I think, is actually the timelines and the long development cycles, the high risks involved, and ultimately, you know, the statistics are one in 10,000 uh, gets to the market as a pharmaceutical. So that's, those are the typical risks that you're faced with. And, and it's actually quite a challenge to get immediate benefits in such a long development cycle and time frames to get immediate benefits to demonstrate to the to the knowledge holders like the sun people 
what are the immediate benefits because you cannot wait a lifetime mm. uh, for, for any benefits that can accrue to you. Mm. The responsibility of the scientist would be is to prior informed consent uh, with regard to working with knowledge holders is probably the most important uh, component I would say into, in, into being responsible uh, and allowing and getting information and consent from knowledge holders to either publish, to patent and to jointly publish as well. My boodskap for the Westerse of the world is come on the break the sun to know some of the Westers to keep our land gezond and a lekker leven in die toekomst uit te beeld en te leef. Ngom ga buhu ga beti khat ge klach ga a a o da ta e da ya chen ga beti a da ba na ba ka a da be da ga ya kwa ku ngon ga ku a ta ge ka da chen ngom ga ngom ge ya khong ga e ka o ga da ga ki kwa sa ti ke ki kwa sa ti khon ngon ga ba ka ku Die Buchu, jelke mens kan dit gebruik, ongeacht kinders en groot mense kan dit allemaal die medicijnige gebruik. Al is dit waarom, wat ek kan moet sê, vreed waar, wat ek kan van jou gesê, moet jy dit gebruik, maar laat jy gezond word, hoe die Buchu. Buchu was van die begin af daar, Buchu is vandag nog hier, en Boekhoe sal hier wees tot in alle eeuwige. So sal ons sê, ons sal kennis, as ons baie plekke gevat, self gevat, self gedoe, dier slim mense. Mense wat kom en ons mooi inlei met een tien randje en een vijf randje, en daar kry hulle die kennis en daar werk hulle met hom. Die enigste oplossing, denk ek, volgens my, domgeheid, as ons probeer om te verstaan wat hulle doen en hulle ons verstaan wat ons wil hee wat gedoen moet word en ons saam kan werk, kan ons een baie beter en een goeie toekomst vir alle afstammeling volke wil hee.